Hi, my name is Nikki, and I will be focusing on the feminism paradigm and the psychological paradigm. I will relate these paradigms to childbirth and midwifery, and then I will make links to myself and to the social construction of knowledge in relation to the psychological paradigm. To give a brief overview, the definition of feminism is the advocacy of women's rights on the grounds of equality of the sexes. It is the belief and the aim that women should have the same rights, power and opportunities politically, economically, socially and financially that men have. Feminism is not only of benefit to women, but it seeks to relieve men of oppressions. Men are expected to ignore their emotions and not express themselves in a feminine manner and to take on the huge responsibility of being the sole financial provider. Feminism wants to get rid of gender roles and to allow opportunities for women to bring home the money or a man to be a stay at home dad. Feminism is all about options and a healthy balance between work and life. Historically, childbirth was an aspect of life that men were not allowed to be a part of. Most men were isolated behind closed doors in a waiting room, and they were not allowed to be part of the childbirth process until the 1970s and even in the 1980s in some hospitals. Feminism has changed gender roles, therefore men adapted a more domestic masculinity where they started helping with domestic duties such as raising children and changing nappies. In doing so, they, re they recognised the benefits, and this made them more encouraged to participate in childbirth. Birth is a feminist issue. Historically, women viewed birth as a natural experience. Birth was attended by female midwives and female family members. It was not until the 18th century that men began to train in childbirth, as medical advances in obstetrics became a lever for the introduction of men to the arena of childbirth, which was previously managed and run by women. This change had some benefits, but also had some disadvantages. In the 19th century, medical students could qualify as doctors, but midwifery was completely ignored. Before the 1880s, maternal mortality rates in hospitals skyrocketed due to perpetual fever. It was then discovered that women who gave birth at home were at a much lower incidence of the fever due to the absence of the obstetricians. It was then discovered that this fever was spread by lack of hand hygiene from obstetricians, spreading disease from one labouring woman to the next. In 1883, Parliament decided midwifery would be reduced to a branch of nursing, Therefore, Save the Midwives was set up, which successfully campaigned for midwives, independent training and work. This started the long process of women taking back their rights to childbirth. The definition of psychology is the scientific study of the human mind and behaviour. The term psychology comes from the Greek word, which means the study of the soul. The psychological paradigm is greatly linked to childbirth and midwifery. I believe a midwife needs to create a strong bond and mother and midwife need to work together in a partnership in order for the woman to fully trust the midwife enough to disclose important information and to feel secure and at peace during the birth process. Pregnancy can be a beautiful experience for many women, bringing about feelings of joy and excitement, but it can also bring the opposite emotions. Some women experience antenatal or postnatal depression. Antenatal and postnatal depression are clinical depressions that can affect a woman during pregnancy and postpartum. It is thought to be caused by the stress associated with pregnancy, but it can be also caused by many other factors, usually involving aspects of the mother's personal life, such as family, economic status, relationship status, but may also be caused by hormonal and physical changes. If left untreated, antenatal and postnatal depression can have serious implications for fetal development. The psychology of birth. The way many births are done is unfortunately a disruption to the mother-baby bonding process. John Bowlby states in his attachment theory that babies that have been hospitalized and separated from their parents had adverse long-term effects for the way they view themselves and the way they view their parents. 
I can also personally relate to the psychological paradigm as I was pregnant at 16. The sunplayed pregnancy brought with it a great deal of emotions and, and a great deal of stress. I had no fixed abode at the time, um, an unstable relationship. The judgment was just huge. I had a lot of fear and lack of stability. Um, this adversely affected my emotions, um, my pregnancy, and also, I believe, the outcome of my birth. Um, and when I compare my first pregnancy to my second, I have no doubt that my psychological state played a huge role in the pregnancy and birth outcome. My second pregnancy was enjoyable. It was a planned pregnancy. I had a nice house. I was in a financially stable position. And this good psychological state made me aware of my physical needs. I was um, exercising regularly, swimming, and I was eating really, really healthy. I was, I was just happy. I was relaxed. And this made me more in tune with my body during labor, which resulted in an amazing birth experience. Um, I, my first birth was like 18 hours compared to four hours and I was just so relaxed and it was just it was just so awesome I was in hospital for less than 10 minutes before he was born um, and this great birth experience um, created just the best bonding experience with me and my son and the breastfeeding just came really really easily as well the social construction of knowledge concerning psychology and childbirth and midwifery I feel that psychology during pregnancy and childbirth is not socially discussed as often as it should. For example, depression is freely talked about in women who are not pregnant, but when a pregnant woman expresses her feelings of stress and sadness, it is commonly dismissed as how a pregnant woman should be due to the hormones, emotions, body changes, and social changes. This to me is a social construction. And just because a woman is pregnant doesn't mean the pregnancy is the cause for her psychological state. And she should still be considered equal to any other human being regarding her psychological state. As a midwife, I believe it is extremely important to make sure that a woman feels listened to, that she feels medically safe, her needs are evaluated and a strong emphasis is placed on her psychological well-being. All in which affects her baby. If the woman feels safe and open to talk about her feelings, this will be imperative to the psychosomatic effect, which will then ideally positively affect her pregnancy and the outcome of her birth.